We'll get you next time. No, Joseph is here. He's here. I don't know who's here. Shana Tova. We begin this morning's service with the singing of Ma Tovu on page 110.
we continue responsively on page 111. Ma tovu, how good they are, these tents of Jacob, how beautiful the homes where Israel dwells, and blessed are all who have a home when so many yearn for shelter and for care. And blessed are we who share this house which shelters us where we belong, this house of Torah, this house of love, of sacred assembly and communal strength. In small and humble rooms and splendid sanctuaries today, our people greet the turning of the year. We stand with all of them this morning, grateful we're alive to meet this day, first dawning of the year. For all of us, no matter where we've traveled, come back to celebrate the season of return. Give praise to this morning, give thanks for our gathering, give ear to the ancient call that brings us home. Our hearts rise up in hope, our spirits reach for new beginnings, our voices too lift up a melody that celebrates today. How good they are, these tents of Jacob, how beautiful the homes where Israel dwells. We continue with Asher Yatsar and Elohai Neshama on pages 120 and 122. Page 129. Hihir atzon milfanecha Adonai Eloheinu velohe avotenu vimotenu. Together, may it be your will, Adonai, our God and God of our ancestors, that we discipline ourselves in Torah and devote ourselves to mitzvot. Help us to keep far from sin, to master temptation, and to avoid falling under its spell. May our darker passions not rule us, nor evil companions lead us astray. Rather, strengthen in us the voice of conscience, prompt us to good deeds of goodness, and bend our every impulse to your service. Today and every day, let us be gracious, loving, and compassionate in your eyes and the eyes of all humanity. We continue with Psalm 150 on page 135 as we praise God together as one community in joyful song.
Rise for the Baruch Hu on page 142.
Page 146. Avar Abav Tanu Adonai Elohenu Chemla Gedola Vitera Chamalta Alenu Love, abundant love, unstinging. Our God, you have enfolded us in love, tender compassion beyond all bounds, your perfect gift. Our parents gave you their trust, and you gave them Torah, laws by which to live. For their sake, teach us as well, grace us with your guidance, loving Father, merciful Mother of us all together. Grant us clear understanding that we may listen, learn, and teach. Preserve, practice, and fulfill with love every lesson of your Torah. May learning your Torah light up our eyes. May our hearts embrace your mitzvot. Unite us in love and reverence for you that we may never feel ashamed of our deeds. We have trusted in your great and holy name. Now let us celebrate at last the joy of your salvation. Together, bring us in peace from the four corners of the earth. Lead us with upright pride to land that is ours. For you are a God of miracles and wonders. From all the peoples of the earth you sought us out and brought us near to your great enduring truth. So with love we acknowledge and proclaim that you are one. Our praise to you, Adonai. You have singled out your people Israel with love. Amen. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Emet Vyatsi Vahu Vehaviv Venora Ve Adir Veto Vyafe Hadavar Haza Alenu Le Olamva Ed. We read together on one sixty one. The beginning of your word is truth. If you exist at all, I know you can't abide hypocrisy. And most of all, you don't want prayers that lie. You'd rather get an honest fight than strings of empty platitudes. So I can't pretend or hide in pious phrases given to me by the past. It's hard to speak my own imperfect truth. In fact, the more I say, the less I know to know. 
and the farther I get away from you, whatever you might be. I've heard what you really want is not more words. You want the heart. That might be more than I can give, but I can try. Page 164. Rise for the Amidah on page 166.
Please be seated and turn to page 172. The fantasy of the Book of Life and God's judgment is memorable, but the extraordinary aspect of the prayer is its emotional impress. Any of us might die of anything, any time, when, now or later, with or without warning, who by stroke and who by cancer, who by famine and who by plague, who by collision and who by explosion. We are grass, glass, shadow, cloud, atom. Certainly it is imaginary. How else but through imagination do you talk about death in the community where you spend your life, with the people you know, the people you do business with, the people who help you, love you, employ you, exasperate you? In direction and fable are forms of delicacy. They create an atmosphere in which painful subjects can be raised without speaking of specific deaths that have wounded the people you know. The Unatana Tokef was written in a time when fear and sorrow were closer to the surface of public life than they are now. But in private life, we still know that security is a thin veneer. God suspends the earth over the void, says a piyut in the Yom Kippur Shachrit Amidah. The Unatana Tokef shows us the thread on which it hangs. Page 174. We read together. And so let these words of sanctity ascend to you, for you are our God and sovereign. Let us proclaim the power of this day, a day whose holiness awakens deepest awe and inspires highest praise for your dominion, for your throne is a throne of love, your reign is a reign of truth. And so a great shofar will cry to Kia. A still small voice will be heard. Angels in a whirl of fear and trembling will say, Behold the day of judgment, for they too are judged. 
In your eyes, even they are not blameless. All who come into the world pass before you like sheep before their shepherd. As a shepherd considers the flock when it passes beneath the staff, you count and consider every life. You set bounds, you decide destiny, you inscribe judgments. Together at the bottom of page 178, on Rosh Hashanah this is written, on the fast of Yom Kippur this is sealed. How many will pass away from this world? How many will be born into it? Who will live and who will die? Who will reach the ripeness of age? Who will be taken before their time? Who by fire and who by water? Who by war and who by beast? Who by famine and who by drought? Who by earthquake and who by plague? Who by strangling and who by stoning? Who will rest and who will wander? Who will be tranquil and who will be troubled? Who will be calm and who tormented? Who will live in poverty and who in prosperity? Who will be humbled and who exalted? <laughs> Utshuva utfila utstaka ma'avirin et roa hagzera. But through return to the right path, through prayer and righteous giving we can transcend the harshness of the decree. Together, you are everything that we praise you for, slow to anger, quick to forgive. You do not wish the death of sinners, but urge them to return from their ways and live. Until the day of death, you wait for them. You accept them at once if they return. Since you created us, you know our impulses. We are but flesh and blood. We who are mortal, our origin is dust, and so is our end. We wear out our lives to get our bread, like broken vessels, like withered grass, like a flower that must fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by, mere dust on the wind, a dream that flies away together. But for you, ever-living sovereign, time has no limits. Your presence, unbounded by days and years, is everywhere a glorious mystery none can decipher. Your name is worthy of you, and you are worthy of your name, and our name you have linked with yours. We rise for the Kiddushah on page 184. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Dor Vador Nagid Godlecha Ula Netzach Netzachim Kedushat Ha Nakdish Vishivcha Ha Lohenu Mi Pinu Lo Yamush Le Olam Vaed Ki El Melech Gadol Vikadosh Ata. We will teach your greatness, Lador Vador, from generation to generation. And to the end of time, we will affirm your holiness. Our God, your praise shall ever be on our lips, for your power is boundless, sovereign, and holy. Please be seated. Page 194. Ata bachartanu mikol ha'amim, ahavta otanu, baratzita banu. You chose us with love to be messengers of mitzvot, and through us you made known your aspirations. Together, among all the many peoples, you gave us a pathway to holiness. Among all the great nations, you uplifted us and made yourself our sovereign. And so we seek you and serve you and celebrate our nearness to your presence. Your great and sacred name has become our calling. Vatiten lanu Adonai Eloheinu Ba'ahava at Yom Hazikaron Haze, Yom Trua, Mikra Kodesh, Zecher Litziat Mitzraim. In your love, eternal our God, you have given us this day of remembrance, a day for the shofar's joyful sound, a day of sacred assembly, a day to be mindful of our peoples going out from Egypt. Eloheinu velohe avotenu veimotenu ya ale ve avo ve agia ve yera e ve yera tse ve yishama ve yipaked ve yizacher zichronenu ufiktonenu. Together, our God and God of the generations before us, may a memory of us ascend and come before you. May it be heard and seen by you, winning your favor and reaching your awareness. Together with the memory of our ancestors the memory of your sacred city, Jerusalem, and the memory of your people, the family of Israel. May we be remembered for safety, well-being, and favor, for love and compassion, for life and for peace on this day of remembrance. Zochrenu Adonai Eloheinu Boletova, eternal our God, remember us. Folktenu vo livracha, be mindful of us. Vohoshienu vo lechaim, and redeem us for a life of goodness and blessing. Page 208. God who is ours and God of our fathers and mothers, lead us to holiness through your mitzvot, and may each of us find a portion of Torah that is ours. You bestow such goodness, teach us to be satisfied and to know the joy of your salvation. Help us to serve you truly with purity of heart, for you are a faithful God whose truth stands forever. Our praise to you, eternal one, whose power pervades all the earth, you bring holiness to the people Israel and to this day of remembrance. Baruch ata Adonai, melech hakol ha'aret, nekadesh Yisrael, v'yom hazikaron. Amen. Page 213. Giver of life and all good gifts, grant us also wisdom to use only what we need, courage to trust your bounty, imagination to preserve our resources, determination to deny frivolous excess, and inspiration to sustain through temptation. Eloheinu velohe avotenu v'imotenu, barchenu v'bracha ha-mishuleshet ha-ktuva b'torah, our God, divine presence, whose path our ancestors walked, bless us now with words first bestowed on Israel in the time of Moses and Aaron, the threefold blessing 
given us through Torah that joins our hope with theirs. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha, may you know God's blessings of shelter and care. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'chunecha, may you receive the light of God's kindness and grace. Yisa Adonai panave lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May you see God's favor and goodness, and may you partake of God's peace. We read together in the middle of page 217. Let the pursuit of peace and justice be our highest good, and may all people make peace their responsibility. Let Torah be a light that guides our lives towards empathy and understanding, toward generosity of heart. Let peace be our passion, chief among our prayers, every season of the year, every hour of the day. You are the blessed one, eternal source of shalom. We continue with a moment of personal prayer and reflection.
We continue now with Avinu Malkenu on page 224. If you are able, please rise. Avinu Malkenu, we stand in awe, we draw close in love. Avinu Malkenu, the power that passes through us and pervades all things. Avinu Malkenu, the divine that is present within and among us. Avinu Malkenu, Shema. We speak the sacred truth aloud that we stand as one accountable for our sins and we yearn for true compassion for our children most of all. May we resist the ravages of illness, fear, and despair. Avino Malkenu, let us summon courage to stand with to withstand our enemies and let the goodness of this gift of life be engraved upon our hearts. May we taste anew the sweetness of each day and let us wake up to the blessings already in our grasp. Avinu Malkenu, however small our deeds, let us see their power to heal. May we save lives through compassion, generosity, and justice. We continue with Seder Kriyata Torah, our service for reading the Torah, found on page 226. We are the people of the book. Through fire and mud and dust, we have borne our scrolls tenderly as a baby swaddled in a blanket, traveling with our words sewn in our clothes and carried on our backs. Let us take up the scroll of Torah and dance with it and touch it and read it out loud, for the mind touches the word and makes it light, so does light enter us and we shine. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Adonai, Adonai, God compassionate, gracious, endlessly patient, loving and true, showing mercy to the thousandth generation, forgiving evil, defiance and wrongdoing, and granting pardon. Adonai,
please be seated. The Torah reading for the first morning of Rosh Hashanah can be found on page 240 in your Machzor, and it comes from Genesis chapter 22. It's the story we call Akedat Yitzchak, the binding of Isaac. And briefly, it forces all of us to ask the question, how strong is your faith? How strong is your faith? So for our first Torah reader, it's my pleasure to call up Eric, Caitlin Price. And for our first Aliyah, it's my pleasure to call Lou Goldstein. Amen. Abraham, by your merry love, Abraham, by your merry name, by your merry cognac, at the ha, a yakid ha, a share a hafta, a yatha, the velicha, el eres hamaria, the ha alehu rusha, leolam, Amen. For a second, Aliyah, it's my pleasure to call Laura Gordon. Third Aliyah, my pleasure to call Steve Roth. 
אשר ברכה בנו מכל העלות, ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. אמן. ויש לי מרבעם אל עצי העולם. וישן על יצקה פנו, ויקרא בידו את האש ואת המאכלת. ואלו שניהם יחדיו. ויאמר יצחק אל אברהם אביו, ויאמר אביו, ויאמר הנה לי בני. ויאמר הנה האש רצים, ויאסף בעולם. ויאמר אברהם אלוהים, עיר אלוה הסב לעולם בני. ואלו שניהם יחדיו. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת, שחיי עולם נתן בתוכנו. ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. For our next reader of Torah, it's my pleasure to call Haley Ginsberg. And for fourth Aliyah, it's my pleasure to call Allison Warzala. Mi shemir chavetenu hivrechet Alexander bat Yosef shalal echamor ha-Torah. Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim V'natam Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Amen Ba'evoh El Hamakom אשר אמר לו אלוהים, צבי בן שם אברהם את המזבח וירוך את העצים ויעקוד את תיתך בנו וישם אותו על המזבח ממעלה לעצים ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו, ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. מי שבן חברתנו יברך את אפרים מלך בן אליעזר שלם לכבוד התורה. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Atah Adonai Ahinu Melech Le'olam. Asher Baruch Avonu Mikol Ha'mi. V'natan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. V'yishlach Abraham Et Yudav V'yikach Et Hamachet. לשהות את בנו ויקרא אליו מלאך אדוני מן השמיים ויאמר אברהם אברהם ויאמר הנה ויאמר אל תעש לו תשלח ידך אל הנער ואל תעש לו מאומה כי את ידעתי כי ירא אלוהים את אתה ולא חסרת את פניך את יחידיך ממני. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לו תורת אמת וקיים עולם נתן בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. על הצירות בת מורחי וגומח שעולה לכבוד התורה. אשתי לא יצאה 
Here it's my pleasure to call Mike Greenberg. Me shabir kavatenu, yurek et Abraham Aaron ben Shalom Leib, shalel et for Hatorah. For who is Adonai Hamorah? Baruch Adonai Hamorah le'olam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamorah le'olam ba'ed. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher bo karbanu mikol ami. Benatan lanu et porto, Baruch ato adonai, no tame ato ra. Amen. Amen. Vaikra, Malach adonai, El Abraham, Shehini, Min Hashemaim, Vayomer, Kinishpati, Mitlum adonai, Kiyan Asher Shehini, et Hadavar has a velo hasata et bincha et yahidaha. Ki berech abrahaha, the harba arben et zaraha, kehove hashamayim, the ko asher al shefatayim, the rush zaraha et jaar oevav, the heat farhu, the zaraha, ko goye, haar et vika. Beka Asher Shumat Bekori Min Vayashev Abraham Al Narav Bekumu Vilehu Yachtav Al Barshava Vishav Abraham Barshava Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Basher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Bichaye Olam Notat Tokinu Baruch Atah Adonai Notin HaTorah Amen Shana The blessing before the Haftorah can be found on page 247. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Asher bofar bin ve'im tovim Beratzav adivrehem hane amarim behemet Blessed are you, our God, eternal, supreme power of the universe who called forth noble prophets to speak the truth. 
Baruch ato Adonai Avocher batora Umoshe Abdo Uv Yisrael Amo Undin Vei HaEmet Vatsedek. Blessed are you, God of eternity, who delights in the Torah, in Moses, God's servant, in Israel, God's people, and in prophets of truth and light. The Haftorah can be found on page 250. And there was a man from Ramataim, Sophim, from the hills of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Yerocham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives, one named Hannah and the other named Penina. Penina had children and Hannah had no children. And this man would go up from his town every year to worship at Shiloh and make offerings to the eternal of heaven's hosts. And there Eli's two sons, Hophni and Pincus, were priests of the eternal. And on the day when Elkanah would make, the off would make offerings, he would give portions to his wife Penina and to each of her sons and daughters. And to Hannah he would give a special portion because he loved Hannah and the eternal had closed her womb and her rival wife would taunt her cruelly to make her tremble with grief, for the Eternal had closed her womb. And so it was, year after year, when she would go up to the house of the Eternal, she, she taunted her and she would cry and not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you cry and why do you not eat? And why are you disheartened? Am I not worth more to you than 10 sons? And Hannah arose after the eating and drinking at Shiloh, while Eli the priest sat upon the throne near the doorpost of the temple of the Eternal. And she, bitter to the core, prayed to the Eternal, weeping and crying, and she vowed and said, Eternal of heaven's hosts, if you will truly see your servant's affliction and remember me and not forget your servant and give your servant a son, I will give him to the Eternal all the days of his life, and no razor shall be lifted to his head. And as her praying before the Eternal intensified, Eli watched her mouth, and Hannah, she was speaking only in her heart. Though her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. So Eli thought she was drunk, and Eli said to her, How long will you persist in drunkenness? Put away your wine, get rid of it. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, a woman of sorrow am I. I drank neither wine nor spirits, but poured out my soul before the Eternal. Do not take your servant for a worthless woman. All this time I have spoken from the depth of my anger, from the greatness of my grievance. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and may God of Israel grant the request you have made. And she said, May your servant find grace in your sight. And the woman went on her way, and she ate, and her face was no longer as it had been. And they awoke early in the morning and worshipped before the Eternal, and they went home, returning to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Eternal remembered her. And so it was that, at the turn of the year, Hannah conceived and then gave birth to a son. And she called him Samuel because I requested him from the Eternal. And the man Elkanah and his whole household went up to make the annual offerings to the Eternal and to fulfill his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, until the boy is weaned, then I will bring him. Once he appears before the Eternal, he will stay there forever. Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what you think is best. Wait until you have weaned him. Surely the Eternal will fulfill what your mouth has uttered. So the woman stayed and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her with a three-year-old bull, one ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Eternal, to Shiloh. And the boy was young. They slaughtered the bull and brought the boy to Eli, and she said, Please, my lord, as you live, my lord, I am the woman who stood here with you praying to the Eternal. It was for this boy that I prayed, and the Eternal granted my request. I, in turn, grant what the Eternal asks of him. As long as he lives, he is dedicated to the Eternal. And there they worshipped the Eternal. And Hannah prayed, saying, Through the Eternal, my heart knows joy. Through the Eternal, my horn is raised. My mouth opens wide against my foes, for I exult in your deliverance. There is nothing like the Eternal, for there is nothing beside you, 
and there is no rock like our God. Speak no more in lofty tones. Let arrogance leave your mouths. All-knowing is the eternal God whose deeds cannot be measured. The bowels of the mighty are broken, while those who falter find strength. Those who are full sell themselves for bread, and the hungry hunger no more. The one who was barren bears seven, and the mother of many is bereaved. The eternal is the maker of death and life, takes down to Sheol and brings back up. The eternal makes poverty and wealth, casts low and raises aloft, lifts the poor from the dust, causes the needy to rise from dung heaps and dwell among princes, then places them on thrones of honor. For the pillars of the earth belong to the eternal, who founded the world upon them, who watches over the steps of the faithful while turning evildoers silent in the darkness. For not by power shall a human being prevail. The eternal shatters foes, thunders against them in the heavens. The eternal judges the earth from end to end. So may God give strength to the sovereign and raise high the horn of God's anointed. The blessing after the Haftorah can be found on page 259. Baruch Olamim. <laughs> Sadek Beko Hadarot, Pael Hanaman, Hamoer, Vose, Ham Dabir Um Kaim, Shekol Divarev, Emet Vatsede, Al Hatara, Vaal Havoda, Vaal Havaim, Vaal Yom Hazikaron, Hazer, Shenatata Lanu, Adanoi Elohenu, Lechavod Utiferet, Ahako, Adanoi Elohenu, Anachnu modim lach um rahim otach. Yeparach shimka bifkol hai tamid le olam voed u divracha emet bechayem la ad. Baruch ator noi melech alcohol kaharetz nikadesh Israel vayom hazikaron. Blessed are you, our God eternal, sovereign of all the earth. You sanctify Israel in the day of remembrance. We continue now with our service for sounding the shofar, which can be found in your supplemental prayer book. Awake, you sleepers, from your sleep. Rouse yourselves, you slumberers. Awake like Israel at the sea, the joyful song of Miriam and Moses. Sing to the Eternal, for God has surged in triumph. The Eternal shall reign forever and ever. Awake like Israel at Sinai to the dignity of being God's partners. You shall be, you shall be for me a holy nation, a sovereign community of priests. Examine your deeds and return to God. Remember your Creator, you who are caught up in the daily routine, losing sight of eternal truth. You who waste your years in vain pursuits that neither profit nor save. Hear the rousing call to repentance. With trumpets and shofar, raise a shout before the Eternal, the Sovereign. Dwell on each sound of the shofar. Contemplate its meaning. Tekiah, one whole note. Shivarim Truah, three broken notes, nine staccato notes. Tekiah, one whole note. <laughs> the return to the right path has the power to make us whole again. Tekiah, once I was whole. Shivarim Truah, and the wear and tear of living became broken and shattered. Tekiah, my teshuva has the power to make me whole again. Together we read the blessings for hearing the sound of the shofar on the top of page two. 
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Ki Shanu B'mitzvotav Sivanu Nishmoa Kol Shofar Blessed is Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who sanctifies us with your mitzvot and commands us to hear the sound of the shofar. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Shechianu V'kiyamanu V'higianu Azman Hazeh Blessed is Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, for giving us life and sustaining us and for enabling us to reach this moment. We are a stiff-necked and stubborn people. Teach us to bend before you. Convinced we are right, entrenched in our own perspective, we resist your call to repent. Convinced we're self-sufficient, entrenched in the illusion of control, we resist your call to humility. Convinced we can have it all, entrenched in the dream of mastering the world, we resist your call to wake up. Today you summon us out of our arrogance, out of our rigidity, fantasy, shallowness, self-deception. Teach us to bend our knees, to bow our heads before the mystery, to realize our frailty and our finitude. Teach us to make you melech, sovereign in our life, to align ourselves with your goodness and truth. We would not bow before Pharaoh. We would not submit to any power on earth or give ourselves to any maternal thing. Stiff neck, stubborn to the end. Today we bow before you. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Mechadesh Yisrael V'yom HaZikaron Praise be the Eternal, our God, ruling Spirit of the universe, who makes holy the house of Israel in this day of remembrance. Tekiah. Shivarim. Takia messenger from another time, a stranger here in our midst, the shofar sounds remembrance. Remember wherever you go, I am with you. After the flood and the wake of destruction, Noah discovered the rainbow. Alone on a mountain, a knife in his hand, Abraham heard the voice of compassion. At the end of her strength, afraid for her child, Hagar found a well in the wilderness. Remember wherever you go, I am with you. In the sounding of the horn, we summon them back, Zikro note, memories of those who saw signs of your presence. A rock gives forth water, hope can blossom in the desert, and when a loving hand lightens our darkness, you are there. When we are caught in the thicket, feel alone or forgotten, the shofar sounds remembrance. From the deep well of the past, 
In the depth of our own despair, the shofar sounds remembrance. Remember, my presence goes with you, and I will lighten your burden. Eloheinu velohea avoteinu v'imoteinu, zochreinu v'zikron tov l'fanecha. God of remembrance, remember the covenant of our people. We reaffirm it today. Remember, we are a people of noble ideals. Help us to attain them. Remember all your people, all the nations on the road to peace. Bless their efforts. Remember with mercy the binding of Isaac, the sorrow of Sarah, Abraham's words, Here I am. Baruch atah Adonai, Zohar Habrit. Blessed are you, Adonai. You remember the covenant. You remember us. Takiyah. Shavarim. Summoned to battle injustice, we heard the rebuke of our prophets. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a shofar. Goodness of the world, tuvo shel olam. Today we stand before the shofar to hear its voice of hope, resilient and strong, proclaiming freedom, promising redemption. In days to come, a great shofar will be sounded. Those lost in the land of Assyria, and those cast away in the land of Egypt, shall come back and worship Adonai on the holy mountain in Jerusalem. To speak out and never grow weary, to hold fast to the message of Sinai, to believe in a time when all life will be cherished, to work for that day, and to know it will come. The blast of the horn sustains us in faith. Sound the shofar on our feast day on the new moon when it is hidden, for this is Israel's law, a decree of the God of Jacob. Praise God with the shofar call, praise God with harp and lyre. To speak out and never grow weary, to hold fast to the message of Sinai, a mighty call that never stops, the shofar resounds forever. All you who live in the world and inhabit the earth, take note of the mighty call that never stops. Give heed when the shofar is blown. Baruch atah Adonai, shomea kol truot, amo Yisrael barachamim. Blessed are you in our lives, Adonai. You hear with love the shofar, true voice of your people Israel. Tekiah. Shavarim. Truah. 
to Kia Gidola. We continue on page 276 as we return the Torah to the Ark. Please rise. All praise God's name, for God's name alone is truly sublime. A precious teaching I have given you, my Torah, do not forsake it. A tree of life to those who hold it fast, all who embrace it know happiness. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Take us back, Adonai, let us come back to you. Renew in our time the days of old.
Once the world was perfect, and we were happy in that world, then we took it for granted. Discontent began a small rumble in the earthly mind, then doubt pushed through with its spiked head, and once doubt ruptured the web, all manner of demon thoughts jumped through. We destroyed the world we had been given for inspiration, for life, each stone of jealousy, each stone of fear, greed, envy, and hatred put out the light. No one, was out with, no one was without a stone in his or her hand. There we were, right back where we had started. We were bumping into each other in the dark. And now we had no place to live since we didn't know how to live with each other. Then one of the stumbling ones took pity on another and shared a blanket. A spark of kindness made a light. The light made an opening in the darkness. Everyone worked together to make a ladder. A wind clan person climbed out first into the next world. And the other clans, the children of those clans, their children and their children, all the way through time to now, into this morning light to you. This is from the current poet laureate of the United States, Joy Harjo. She is not Jewish, but a member of the Muscogee Creek Nation. I was rummaging around a bookstore, and this thin little book caught my attention in its title alone, Conflict Resolution for Holy Beings. I was pulled right in. I was looking for something that could sum up all of my feelings and emotions of what this past year had been for all of us. All the trauma and grief, pain and suffering. There was great love and celebration too, but it felt as though every celebration was also mirrored with pain that came along. A bar mitzvah in the morning, full of celebrating the joy of life and living. His parents standing right here at this very lectern, blessing him and sharing their hopes and prayers with him before placing the Torah lovingly into his arms. And then a shooting in a synagogue in Pittsburgh. And back here in our usual place of comfort, but this time we were gathered with an evening vigil where we cried and held each other, our grief and pain and fear all mixed together. A wedding ceremony here on this very bima, the couple circling each other right over there before entering the chuppah, the symbol of all their hopes and dreams and world and home they wish to build together. And then a shooting in a Walmart where other spouses' hopes and dreams lay lifeless in a pool of blood so it didn't matter to me that the author was Native American. Her words still spoke to my heart, and if we, we holy beings, are to pull ourselves out of the mess we have gotten ourselves into, we're all going to have to come together, borrowing from each other's traditions, and make the peace we so long for. Harjo states, once the world was perfect, but was it really? We use that language, we all do. We look back upon the years that passed and attribute a golden age and something to long for. There was never a time, never a time where everything was once great for all people. Maybe for some, but not for all. There has never been a time in our country when everything has been equitable for everyone. Can you pick a time when everyone lived in perfect harmony? Were Jews, African Americans, individuals of the LGBTQ community, Hispanics, Latinos, those with disabilities, let's just say any minority group, all lived with equal rights and access to services. Don't even think of a decade. Don't even think of a year or a month or a day. Just show me one minute, one sublime minute in our history when everyone was equal and it was all perfect. Once the world was perfect, I wish it were so, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. 
In her poem, Harjo envisions a ladder that the community puts together, a ladder that is formed from a spark of light caused by a simple act of kindness, the sharing of a blanket, a symbol of warmth and protection, security, an act of kindness that was able to reignite the light that was pulled out by fear, greed, envy, and hatred. An act of kindness saved the world. I must admit, it was hard to think about our society coming together to build this ladder, particularly after the year of pain we have felt in places like Pittsburgh and Poway, El Paso, as well as other places like New Zealand and Sri Lanka. How do we overcome this hate to build a ladder, to bring us toward a perfect world? Over the past few months, I have heard people say that the world is broken because of the racists or the supremacists or the NRA or Antifa or those southern invaders or because of certain politicians like Mitch McConnell or Donald Trump or Ilhan Omar or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I believe that they're all wrong. Politicians didn't invent racism or anti-Semitism or the use of fear to obtain power. No, these things have always been around, and we have always worked with others to try and fight it. What I believe is different now is that we have no one to work with, no one to partner with. The reasons why our world feels so broken is because everyone seems to be hating each other more and more than we ever have. We hate the other, and then we blame them for why we hate them. I hate those insert the blank so much because they're nuts or racist or dangerous, whatever it is. I'm not to blame for my hatred of them. They are. There feels as though there is more hate in this world, more so than ever before. And we're becoming more tribal. We're breaking off into our own categories and hating the other people, Democrats, Republicans, all those political parties are now isolating themselves. I don't mind that there are multiple political parties. In fact, I think it's important that there are multiple ways of seeing an issue. What's important is how we come together to solve the issues of society, and we aren't doing that. Instead, we are a society, instead, we as a society are only listening to that which is pleasing to us ignoring the rest, or worse, believing that it's evil. That's why I believe anti-Semitism is on the rise, and why people are looking at our country and wondering, what have we become? In May of 1958, Rabbi Jacob Rothschild of the Hebrew Benevolence Congregation in Atlanta, Georgia, delivered a sermon entitled, Can This Be America? He gave this sermon in the face of growing white nationalism, terrorists who were burning crosses and lynching individuals across the country. He spoke about threats and attacks on those who were minorities, and in particular, he talked about attacks related to religious institutions, of which there have been plenty this past year. He pointed out that one out of every 10 attacks were directed at Jews, at synagogues and community centers. Rabbi Rothschild grew up in Pittsburgh in Squirrel Hill and was raised just blocks away from the Tree of Life synagogue. Almost 60 years to the date of Rabbi Rothschild's sermon, a shooter came into the Tree of Life synagogue and killed 11 worshipers, one of which was Melvin Wax, a cousin of our congregant, Stu Cohn. The white nationalism that Rabbi Rothschild decried in his sermon is still very much alive in this country. There have been so many shootings in this last few years. So many of the attacks have been against the innocent and have been rooted in racial prejudice. As I stand here this morning, I too ask myself, can this be America? America for so many is a dream, a beacon of hope, for us Jews, America was seen as a safe refuge. The same is true for all those who try and escape persecution. But our history with America, like so many others, 
was a mix of dreams realized and dreams destroyed. So many of our ancestors made it into this country and so many were turned away. America's identity as a nation state has not always matched what our founding vision proclaimed. We as a country have always done better when individuals stand together with those who seek to preserve life and liberty and seek justice and equality for all. In the face of this terror, in the face of this nationalistic inspired hatred, in the face of fear and growing anti-Semitism, we must have the courage to call out injustice and prejudice, and we must do it as Jews. As Jews, we should always strive to help improve the fabric of our nation and help support those who weep the most profound of losses. Let us raise our voices and stop the spread of this dangerous form of nationalism so that none again will have their world destroyed due to hatred. It is not enough to condemn the voices of racism and white supremacy. We need a push for education and programming in our schools and our communities to teach respect and understanding and we need to be the embodiment of what we long for. Let me also be clear, this is not about politics. It's not about immigration law or gun control. This is not about Democrats and Republicans. This is about the belief that all people are created but Selim Elohim, that all people are not only created equal, but more importantly are created in the image of God and contain the divine spark and therefore should be afforded the right to life. Hate should have no home within our borders, and as Jews, we should be part of the cause that stands united against such supremacy. As a Jew and as a rabbi and as a citizen of this country, I cannot stand idly by my brother's blood and let more blood be spilled due to inaction. For decades now, the rhetoric used in society has been ratcheted up and up. It is like air pollution. It's not hard to suck it's not it's hard not to suck it in while grasping for fresh air. How on earth do we move in a new direction? I'm reminded of a story one told by Rabbi Yisrael Salanter. He once said, When I was a young man, I wanted to change the world. I found it was difficult to change the world, but instead of giving up, I tried to change my nation. When I found I couldn't change the nation, I began to focus on my town. Couldn't change the town, and as an older man, I tried to change my family. Now as an old man, I realize the only thing I can change is myself. And suddenly I realized that if long ago I had changed myself, I could have made an impact on my family. My family and I could have made an impact on our town and their impact could have changed the nation, and I could indeed have changed the world. First, we start with the realization that we need to begin by looking at ourselves. Can I give up the hate I have for the other, for the people not in my tribe? In 2015, the relatives of people slain inside the historic AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, were able to speak directly to the shooter, Dylan Roof, who had murdered their loved ones. They were at his first court appearance, and one by one, those who chose to speak did not turn to anger. What they did instead was utterly remarkable. They offered him forgiveness, and they were praying for his soul. They did this even as they described the pain of their loss. To me, this is the embodiment of the Jewish principle of yesh ha'avav, yesh gvul, that we should have love for others, but we should also have limits as well. That when somebody crosses over a line for you, when they hit your boundary of gvul, you should keep to that line. But that doesn't mean you respond in anger or rage or bring hate up to motivate yourself to hold the line. It's just your line and you won't cross it. For me, my line is crossed when the actions of others attempt to diminish the divine spark in another. That's when I say, enough. However, it does not mean that I hate the individual for doing it. For example, I find the idea of family separation at the border 
antithetical to our Jewish tradition. Our Jewish tradition speaks greatly about protecting the stranger and the orphan and the widow, those who are most vulnerable in our society. Our tradition doesn't tell us to separate families and create orphans, rather the opposite. I have spoken out about it multiple times and have gone to detention centers to protest it. But I'm protesting the action of it, not the people doing it. I want us to have a conversation. I want, me, I want to engage with others who, who see differently about this issue. How else are we going to change laws and move hearts? How else are we going to have healing if we start hating everyone else around us? Last night, I spoke about I, thou, and I, it, that far too often in our culture, we treat people like its, like things, like obstacles to overcome that can be tossed away. We need to treat everyone, even those we disagree with, as thous, as divine and holy beings that we can connect with and have conflict resolution with. If we let the hate in, if we let them become its, well, it's like an infection or maybe a slow-growing cancer. Once it takes root, it is very hard to cut out. So I begin with myself and work my way out. That's my first step. The second step is with rethinking who should control the narrative. In his book, American Gospel, John Meacham reminds us that belief in God is central to the American experience. That the founders believed themselves at the work in both of service of God and people, not just one another. That is why the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution are meant to protect us from excessive religious influence as well as extreme secularism. The founders believe that the religious voice that reminds us that we are called to be holy is essential. It is a voice that calls us not to live in the swamp of politics, but to come together to help solve society's ills. They were counting on the religious voice to step in when government runs amok. The politicians should not be the only ones controlling the narrative of where we see the future of our country. We, with a religious voice, should speak up and tell them that the hate they are fermenting is no longer acceptable, and we should all raise our religious and moral voices. By all means, let's talk about the issues. Let's debate them like human beings, or rather, as divine creatures. And to do so, we need to have a few ground rules, like how we should treat one another, a Derek Eretz, if you will, of political discourse influenced by our religious tradition. I've always believed that the synagogue should be the place where we can debate society's toughest questions in a safe and respectable manner. Too often, these challenges are used as chess pieces by politicians for personal gain and very rarely handled in any substantive way. But here at Anche Ameth, we will engage with these topics not from a political point of view, but from a theological and Judaic perspective. That's why this year I'm hosting two rabbinic forums as a place where we can respectfully debate society's problems. This is not to create more Democrats or Republicans, conservatives or liberals, but a forum for us to understand where each of us is coming from and find rooting for ourselves in our tradition. You can find details about it in the program book, but the first is on the American political divide, and the second is on how we talk about Israel. What these rabbinic forums hope to offer is another way of looking at the world and perhaps be moved and changed by others. At the very least, we can develop empathy for where we are each coming from. That is the hope that our tradition that the hope is that our tradition will give us guidance in our political views and not the other way around. As Jews, we should never be loyal to a particular political party, but only to our faith, tradition, and God. These are the steps, just as Rabbi Salinter spoke of. First, we take a look at our own hearts and homes, and then our immediate community, and then the society around us. That is how we can change the world. And that is what we'll be doing here. Small steps, but essential steps, 
if we were to ever work on more significant issues. Now, when it comes to anti-Semitism, that is one thing that we will never be able to protest away. Yes, we want to push back against the bullies of the world, but as Barry Weiss puts it, if the response ends there with anger, you have missed a tremendous opportunity to examine why you want to fight back and what exactly you are fighting for. When responding to anti-Semitism and supremacy, we must always speak the truth and have the rhetoric for what it is. We must be com comfortable with the discomfort of seeing and hearing this anti-Semitic rhetoric. Don't flee from it. Otherwise, you can't call it out. And call it out you must, especially when it's hard. We live in an odd world where we can be many things at once. I had a roommate back in college who I'm close to even to this day. When I wasn't able to come home for Yom Kippur, he would provide a breakfast meal for me. He loved hearing about my tradition. He wasn't Jewish. There was a moment, though, when he was looking for an apartment after college when he expressed his concerns of being Jewed out of an apartment. Here is somebody who was a friend of the Jewish people but didn't realize the words he was saying were anti-Semitic or how it impacted others. When responding to anti-Semitism and supremacy, it's not easy to call it out, especially if it comes from the people in your office or those who you're close with, or even if it's the people from your own political party, whether it's Representative Steve King, Representative Ilhan Omar, or whether it's the President of the United States. Anti-Semitism knows no party. It knows no party affiliation. It is everywhere, and we must call it out for what it is, bigoted and racist anti-Semitic language. And maybe in the calling out of this hatred, there's a possibility for them to change. We should always make the space for one to turn their ways around. That is, in fact, what Teshuvah is all about. Lastly, if you are discontent with what you are seeing around you, do not be a passerby. Be a participant. Get some skin in the game. Don't just watch it transpire before you and let it fester in anger. Do something about it. To quote Joy Harjo, for any spark to make a song, it must be transformed by pressure. There must be an unspeakable need, the muscle of a belief, and wild, unknowable elements. On these high holy days, it's not just us as individuals that need to do teshuva, it is our whole society. Not teshuva like the big R of repentance, but teshuva to help us cast off the darkness that infects us, to bring ourselves closer to light and closer to sacred living. Let us all come together as one community to engage in this repair. Amen to Amen.
Bena Tova once again. Uh, before we conclude our service, just a, a few uh, thank yous and announcements. Um, a lot goes into preparing for the High Holy Days, and I want to make sure that we take a moment to thank everyone who helped make this season possible. A thank you to all of our ushers, all in the direction of Russ Einbinder. Thank you to our seating committee, Rochelle Newman, Joy Goldstein, Elizabeth King, Andy Pober, and Erica Price. Thank you to our amazing choir, all under the direction of Canner Ott, with a big thanks to John Sheridan and Ricky and Dana Stein for conducting the choir while Canner Ott sing down here with us. And also a big thank you to organist extraordinaire Shea Veloso, who is on that side of the wall. <laughs> thank you to all our officers and board members who helped make all this possible. A Yasher Koach to our shofar blowers and Torah chanters this morning who were fantastic. Thank you to our custodial staff, Julia, Zoraida, and Jim, who work tirelessly to make this building sparkle. Thank you to our administrative staff, Jen, Rose, Anne, Uma, Amy, Tara, Florica, and Nancy. We really couldn't have done this without you. And a big thank you to our professional staff, Rabbi Glasser, Kanner Ott, Matt Vogel, our Director of Youth Engagement and Membership Engagement, and Ina Shepard, our GON Director, and Heather Kibble, our Executive Director. It is great to have you as a part of our family. And an extra special thank you to Cantor Ott as you begin your transition from Cantor to Cantor Emerita. It has been an honor to share this BIMA with you, and I can't wait for all the singing we have left to do together. We are mostly on time. And the family service will begin not in one minute downstairs, but as soon as the clergy get here. So it'll begin shortly. Theoretically, Toshlik should still be happening at Donaldson Park at 2.30. Um, I did hear that there is an extreme um, high tide right now. So we might not be standing on the pier to do Toshlik. We might be standing by third base in Donaldson Park to do Toshlik but I trust that eventually the bread will get to the fish. The second day of Rosh Hashanah will begin right here at 10 a.m. No tickets are needed. And all of you have reusable bags on your seats. Please fill them with food for us to give out to the soup kitchens in our area. I see that act of bringing in food on Yom Kippur, what helps make the difference between an easy fast and a meaningful fast. I also want you to mark your calendars for our 160th anniversary, which is October 11th and also October 13th. On the night of our 160th, which is October 11th, we'll be having a special service here in the sanctuary, and then we're going to have dinner in the social hall, which that night we will rededicate lovingly as the Barbara Kagan Littman Social Hall and I would love for all of us to be there to celebrate that precious moment. And then on October 13th, please RSVP for our day of service. We thought about what we could do as a community that would be emblematic of who we are as Anche Emeth, and what we thought was we should have a day of service where we help the people of New Brunswick, because in every generation and decade of our temple here in New Brunswick, we have always, always partnered with the people of New Brunswick to help make this place and city better. So please RSVP for our day of service. And once again, Shana Tova. We continue with Alenu on page 286, and if you're able, please rise. Alenu
page 289. May the time not be distant, our God, when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give way to integrity and goodness, when lies and bigotry shall no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye. So may all created in your image become one in spirit and one in friendship, forever united in your service. Then shall your dominion be established on earth, and the word of your prophet fulfilled, Adonai will reign forever and ever. There are stars up above, so far away we only see their light, long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with people that we loved, their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us. As we live our days, these are the ways we remember. Our thoughts turn to loved ones whom death has taken from us in recent days, and those who died at this season in years past. Our hearts open as well to the wider circles of loss in our community and wherever grief touches the human family. Zikronam Livracha, may their memories be a blessing in this new year and always. As we say, Amen. We rise for Kedisha Tom as one community on page 292. Yikadal vikadash shemei rabah v'almad ivrach ruotei v'amlik malchutei v'chayi echon v'yom echon v'chayi dekol v'ch Yisrael v'agalah v'zman kari v'yimru amen Yehe shemei rabah m'varach l'olam olamei almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitbar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh Vietadar, Vitale, Vitalao, Shemei de Kudisha, Brihu, Leela, Uleela, Miko, Birkata, Vishirata, Tush Bekata, Venechamata, Damiran, Vyama, Vimru, Amen, Ehe, Shlama, Raba, Min Shemaya, Vechaim, Aleno, Vel, Ko Israel, Vimru, Amen, O Se Shalom, Bimromab, Huya, Se Shalom, Aleno, Vel, Ko Israel, Vimru, Amen. May the source of peace bestow peace on all who mourn, and may we as, be a source of comfort for all who are bereaved, as we say, Amen. with the singing of Ein Kelohenu on page 299.
hear at son melfanecha Adonai Elohenu velehe avotenu vimotenu shit hadesh alenu shana tova umetucha our God and God of our ancestors, eternal God of all generations, may your presence in our lives this new year renew our spirits and renew our strength. May it be a good year, may it be a sweet year, and may you be inscribed and sealed in the book of a life well lived. Amen and Shana Tova. Amen.